We'll be back to the self mastery school where we learn about things that help us to understand ourselves and um, get a deeper understanding of our lives and grow as human beings. We are meant to grow, we are not meant to just remain at a certain point because we are different from other creatures in that way. So we are going to look at something which is very interesting today and it's going to help us to understand some of the wounds that you may be having and it's hard to understand it's hard to really acknowledge that you have certain wounds when you don't even know what they are yeah all you'll be feeling is the pain but you just don't know where the pain is coming from so let's explore this and hopefully we shall get some some things to work on and grow as human beings so we're going to look at uh, insecure attachment and before i get into the insecure attachment i would love to first explain what attachment is and how it may arise some of the insecure attachment uh, mechanisms that we usually uh, adopt as we as we grow so we are going to look at it and it is the attachment theory it focuses basically on relationships and bonds uh, attachment it can be between a parent and a child or it can be even in romantic relationships excuse me so uh, when we are born we have that innate innate desire that innate need to form attachments because if we don't form attachment with our caregivers or our parents our survival chances go down because we need them a hundred percent to give us food to give us like love and so many things so we need to form a bond with them and that is what usually helps so many organisms even animals have that the bonding thing so you find that they they move around with their caregiver otherwise you would find babies which who are who cannot really look after each uh, after themselves moving alone and chances are high that they will probably be eaten by a predator or they may not actually survive so it's very important that is the whole point and then so the central theme of this attachment theory is that if your caregiver your parent your guardian is available and responsive to you when you are an infant it allows you to develop that sense of security because that is very important if you if you don't have form that sense of security you're going to be extremely anxious in the world and because of that you'll not be able to really f live that fully fledged life because you'll be scared of so many things so it helps you to form that secure to get that sense of security and it's very very important so here the caregiver has to be available to you and responsive to your needs that is what helps you to form this sense of security um to go deeper about this uh, a psychologist named mary ainsworth uh, she really did a very groundbreaking study about this and she she carried out a study that was called the strange situation study and she worked with children who were between 12 to 18 months that's one year and to one year and a half months and these these babies these toddlers these are babies they are not that old one year so these uh, these babies were left in a room each baby was left in a room alone with the parent and they were playing around they were you know the parent was there with the baby and then um after that the child also explored the room that that they were in with the guidance of the parent so the child was very um you know with the parent and they were feeling a bit secure because they are with someone that they are in what their caregiver in that room and then after the, after a few minutes a stranger enters the room and then talks to the parent and then the parent leaves the room so when the when the stranger talks to the parent 
the stranger now approaches the child because the child is now moving around and exploring what the environment so the parents left the room and then after some time the parent would come back to the room so different reactions were observed by different children it was not uh, observed that you know a child who was securely attached when their parent left the room they they really had visible signs that they were not comfortable they were upset so when that parent came back the child was very happy and he, he also because there was a stranger that was left to that child in the room when the child was insecure or he was maybe scared he he got some kind of comfort from that stranger so that is that is what the securely attached children were seen doing however those who were insecurely attached um they noticed that some kids even when the parent left they didn't show any clear signs that they were really upset they they they, they just kept doing what they were doing and even when the parent came back um kids who, who had the avoidant the avoidant um uh, that avoidant uh, attachment style the, even when the parent came back they really didn't show any sign of joy like they, they they just kept doing whatever they were doing they didn't seem really bothered and then there are also other uh, the other third category of the children those ones which who are anxiously attached they were uh, clearly upset with the parent for leaving and even when the parent came back they they were they were like they were angry for the parent leaving them so they had that anxiety and they really didn't trust that stranger they didn't even go to them for comfort so that's what was observed and it was very interesting so now with that being said <coughs> we realize that they are they there is a securely attached category and that is what that, that is what the ideal would be because a child would should be able to trust the caregiver and seek comfort when they need it however i want to concentrate on the insecure attachment and the wounds that we usually carry when we have the insecure attachment uh, as i discuss this you should also note that <coughs> being a child who is insecurely attached doesn't mean that you're going to obviously grow up to be insecurely at attached with your romantic partners it's not a must however they notice that the, the attachment that you you exhibit as your child usually predicts your behavior when you're going to be in the, that romantic relationship and you know because some things happen in the middle before you get into the, the romantic age where you get into romantic relationships they also modify your behavior and your responses so some some people some kids who are actually uh, securely attached were shown to show some level of anxiety and insecure attachment when they were now in the romantic partners because life happens it doesn't remain the, the, the way it is some actually grow some some people who are insecure attached they really get lucky they meet people who are securely attached and then they all they do in our work and they heal so <coughs> what i'm trying to say is that there is something that you can do about it so these are some i'm going to discuss some of the wounds that you will exhibit when you're insecurely attached and that will give us um, the guide to what we are supposed to do so that we can heal so that you can become securely attached so the core wounds that usually are in our subconscious mind because th these beliefs these are actually beliefs that we are going to look at and they are wounds in the sense that they are not what our that they are not what we are supposed to believe about about the uh, relationships they are wounds they harm our subconscious mind and we shall also see that they make us have coping mechanisms which are not healthy and in, and in um in return we fail to really form secure uh happy fulfilling relationships when we grow up this also cut across even with friendships if you you have a given attachment style it can also be reflected in your friendships not just romantic partners 
So the very first core wound that is very common and it's very painful is that that one where you believe that you're not worthy of love. So many situations make us feel that we are not worthy. Someone does not have to come and tell you that you're not worthy to be loved. But what you see, the actions of the people around you, and also what happens in other people's lives is what really gets you to have this belief. Because with a subconscious mind, it's emotion. It really decodes emotions. Emotion and, and repetition. So I want, I want us to, to really go back to our childhood because this is where some of these things start from. And we cannot make any changes when we don't go back to bring them to the surface and process them and deal with them. So unworthy of be being loved. Uh, some of us grow with parents who never actually told us that they love us. So, um, <clears throat> and also who did actions that did not really show us that we are being loved. I, I, I'm, I personally, I'm, I'm, I'm from that generation where the 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 beatings were ex the very severe like the, the the spanking were very severe and at some point you would feel like actually they, they don't love you i am um, there are some situations which really ingrain that 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 belief that you actually you don't worthy to be loved and when you grow up with this belief in you when you don't change it along the way it will show up in your relationships. You will first of all be with people who actually don't love you because you don't even feel to be loved. And if you feel meet someone who actually loves you, you may end up subconsciously sabotaging that relationship because you don't really feel that you're worthy to be loved. In fact, you will feel like you're, you're even lucky that that person is in your life and that they are willing to be in your life. So you will actually bend your back backwards for this person because even when you're not being treated well, for you, you do not see, because you don't believe that you're actually what? Worthy to be loved. So this is a huge, huge core wound. And it's very common with people who are fearful avoidant, who are uh, dismissive avoidant, even anxiously attached. This is a huge, huge wound that has to be reprogrammed. It has to be removed from your subconscious and replaced with feeling worthy of love because each and everyone is worthy to be loved it doesn't matter where you come from who you are what your color is how your intelligence like uh, iq is you're worthy to be loved so another one which is very big is that people will use me this one is very common with the people who are uh, dismissive avoidance so for them uh, like we see in this picture they tend to run away from love like they don't first of all they do not really put that much value to it though they deeply want it they want it but but they tend to push out people because they they feel like they are being used or they will be used and this is very very easy to believe because you see so many people around us like so many relationship uh, relationships around you where you were clearly seeing that yes this person is actually being used they don't love them so because of that imagine if you're not if you feel you're not being if you're not worthy of being loved it means someone who is in your life you're going to be cautious you're going to be um uh you will not be trusting that that person actually loves you you're going to feel they want something from you and because of that they are just using you to fulfill their needs yet relationships have to be there is mutual benefit there is that sharing aspect so this person will feel that they will use them and most of the time they will just easily start from relationships or they will not really go deeper there will not be that strong connection in that relationship that they are in another big one is i can't trust anyone this is common this is like everywhere i know we are going we may deny but that is the truth if you feel like you can't trust anyone and this this is actually being ingrained in us almost every time when we hear of relationships that have failed growing up i saw so many so many uh, relationships where there was a lot of betrayal the infidelity the um, just that just uh, like there were so many big things that i saw around me 
even within my own family that um that made me feel like you know what i really can't trust anyone and you resort to only trusting yourself whereby even yourself you 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 will not do a hundred percent of what you want to do so the trust wound is deep it's almost everywhere it's big it has to be reprogrammed for you to be able to trust yourself first of all and also be able to trust others and the, and the most important thing that you need to really invest your trust in is in that that higher power god you can call it the higher power you, so many ways of calling that higher power but god generally so <coughs> The other big, big core one that is there is that I'll be rejected if they get to see me. And this is related to that I'm, I am defective. I personally, before I, I really did some healing in myself, I felt I was defective. You know, some things happen in your, in your life and you feel you're broken. You feel you, there is something wrong with you because you wonder if these bad things are happening in my family. And they are not happening in someone else's family you now personalize because children have that you know it's hard for you to because your um the, your conscious mind has not developed so well you tend to personalize everything you blame it on yourself so for me i thought because so many things are going wrong in my family i thought maybe i'm the one with a problem i am defective so this was a big one that i really had to deal with and then the other one is I'm um, alone. This one is very common with people who have anxious attachment. They are they feel alone and they are actually scared of being alone. That's why you find that even when they are not in a relationship that is healthy for them and they really see that it's really declining, it's making their health suffer, their mental, physical and spiritual health suffer. They will not want to leave the relationship because they don't like they fear being alone they fear of being with themselves and one of the things one of the gifts that i've learned during this process that i've gone through for developing and growing as a person and doing the inner work is having that that peace with solitude it's very good to learn to be with yourself first before you allow someone to be in your life because if you can't be with yourself why would you expect someone to want to be with you so this is a huge one then the another one that was so big for me was that I'm trapped. Oh God, this was huge. I think it's very common with fearful avoidant. I was completely fearful avoidant. And things would be going on so well initially. But when I see that the commitment is coming in, like, you know, you feel like you're going to be trapped. Because growing up, I, when I saw that my, my mom had, you know, was in a very unhealthy marriage. But I saw her being trapped because she was already married legally and you know some systems just don't favor divorce. So in a way I saw her trapped and I promised myself that I never wanted to put myself in that, that kind of situation. So whenever things started to look the other way in my relationships, that, that, that pain, that feeling came and I really felt like I'm going to be trapped for the rest of my life. And for some reason, th some, I would do something like I would self sabotage, such that I would get that, such that I get out myself out of that being trapped. So these are very, bi very big core wounds that need to be addressed, and it starts. It has to be done on the subconscious level. You need to to do it from that level, and this this now goes to the parents, as we've talked about the attachment styles. And we see that we parents have a very big role to play in how our children are going to to be relating in the future so we need to know that we have to be responsive to them we need to make sure they are securely attached to us because that is like giving them a very good foundation for relationships in the future and even between 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 uh, uh, them and us because as they grow up our relationships our relationship with them keep evolving as when they are teenagers you don't relate to them the way you were relating to them as, as toddlers and that's where some of the things are going to come in if your child doesn't feel safe around you they'll not really tell you some of those 
there are challenges that you would probably help them solve when they are really grown when they have grown bigger and you would wonder why why is it happening it's because that foundation was not set initially that open communication that safe space that they need for them to trust you and know that they can pour out the, their heart to you and you'll be able to embrace them and love them despite anything so thank you for watching i really hope this video added some value to you share it with someone who may need it it's very very important to understand these concepts see you and god bless bye bye